Okay, Chris. Hello again, everyone. I am Chris Scher, and this is the Citizen Sports Weekly for Friday, November 4th, 2022. Robert Harding and the man who's celebrating his birthday today, Justin Ritzel. Happy birthday, Justin. Hey, thanks. Yeah, a year older and a year wiser. That's hope. debatable, the second yeah. part, but... So according to a pa- according to a patron at uh, Saratoga City Tavern four years ago, uh, this is Justin's fortieth birthday. So congratulations! And it's my fortieth birthday. No, no, you were forty four years ago. Back then, so I guess I'm like forty two now in Saratoga years. All righty, so let's get started here. A uh, quick recap of last week. Justin was our picker of the week. I guess he was three and one. And Robert and I each went two and two. Robert is still the leader, 18 and 13. I am 17 and 14. And Justin is 15 and 16. So it's, uh, you know, we're all within three games of each other. It's pretty pretty competitive. So we've got four NFL games picked, and we're going to talk about a couple other NFL topics. So let's get to it. Our first game, Robert's Buffalo Bills going on the road to East Rutherford to play their hated division rival, the New York Jets. The Bills are favored by 11 and a half. Robert, I'll let you go first on this one since it's your team. Who do you like? I should say, how much do you have the Bills winning by? Well, you know, I before I got to watch the uh, the Bills Packers game last week, since they were in prime time, I saw that I caught the Jets game, and boy, is that a dog team! You know, that Cougar Hunter at quarterback isn't very good, Uh, and you know that the rest of the team. You know, I think the defense is solid. Uh, you know, the loss of uh, Br- Brees Hill there was um, uh, was a big blow. You know, but they, I, I think they have decent weapons on offense. But Zach Wilson is not a good quarterback, and um, you know, I mean, this guy's just air mailing interceptions. And you know, I mean, geez, Zach, you know, learn how to gift wrap before you throw some of those. Um, just a terrible quarterback. Uh, so. You know, the Bills defense a little banged up. Uh, you know, Jordan Poyer won't be playing, but Von Miller will be. I think, you know, really the front seven uh, will dictate this one. Uh, Zach Wilson does not do good under pressure. So I think they're going to want to get get pre- pressure him early and often on Sunday. Uh, and then the Bills, Bills offense, I think, will do the rest from there. Um, I, I see this as at least a two-touchdown game. I won't get as cocky as last week. You know, I got a little cocky with – Ritz's team there said, Oh, 20 and a half, you know, it, it, the bills it, didn't even cover 10 and a half. So, you know, but this week, I think, you know, they'll, they'll shake off that bye week rust or whatever the hell that was last week. And uh, we'll, we'll see the offense that, uh, um, you know, that uh, has dominated early on this season. So of course I'll take the bills. Justin, who do you like? Yeah, it's amazing how Green Bay managed to cover, even though they were absolutely robbed of one of their touchdowns that got called back. But maybe we can discuss that another time. Um, yeah, it's it's weird to say because the you know the Jets absolutely you know if you want to play like the um, the roundabout game of like well the uh, the Jets absolutely crushed the Packers two three weeks ago and uh, the Packers managed to I guess you know, cover against the Bills. I don't know if that was really as, as close as the final score would indicate, but um, yeah, it's just, it's just tough to trust Zach Wilson. He, I, I really don't know if like he's this bad of a quarterback or like just those reps that he missed all of training camp of just really not giving him a, a chance to perform this year. I think you have to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, but it, it's too bad for the Jets because I, I do feel like they're a team that has a lot of good pieces pretty much everywhere else on the roster between sauce Gardner's like a really good cornerback. Uh, he's a rookie. Their defensive line is really solid. They do have some receiving threats and, you know, they lost their rookie running back, but they go out and pick up James Robinson. I think this team really is uh, a, a quarterback away from maybe giving the bills at least the challenge. I don't know if I'd say they'd overtake the bills, but uh, I, I, like Robert said, it just comes down to the quarterback play for me. And um, the Jets haven't really, you know, they've played Russell Wilson, who's been a bum this year. They played Rodgers, who's really struggled this year. But other than that, they've played a lot of dog quarterbacks. Josh Allen is the opposite of a dog quarterback. He's 
in my opinion, the MVP front runner. And uh, I think the Bills will win this comfortably. Yeah, and I feel the same way. I think the Bills covered the 11 and a half too. So it, it's division game and everything and, and just – you know, the Jets, I mean, look, you saw what Bill Belichick did to them and everything, and I just don't have good vibes here. The Bills know that they've got to they've got to win those division games and everything, and uh, I think they're going to be pretty motivated. I mean, like I said, could the Jets hang tight for a little bit? Yeah, I mean, look, the Jets have a solid defense, but, I mean, I don't see them slowing down Josh Allen this entire game, and, and so I think the Bills win and cover the 11 and a half. I think they're probably going to win by about 14, so. All right, our next game is the Minnesota Vikings, three-point favorites on the road at the Washington Commanders. Uh, Minnesota, six and one. It's a quiet six and one. And uh, you can argue about, you know, that maybe they played a bunch of stiffs. They don't play in the best division in, in, you know, in football, whatever. But six and one is still six and one. Uh, the Commanders, I mean, I think Taylor Heineke is a better quarterback for them than Carson Wentz. But I think this is the – I've heard a lot of people say – that this is the um, the revenge game for our old buddy there, who's not playing in a prime time game. Uh, we we like that, <laughs> but this is the revenge game. So I like Minnesota to go in and cover the minus three at Washington. Go ahead, Robert. You know it's it's interesting uh, when I when I saw the spread, I was like, oh, this is. This is kind of different. I mean, I knew that the commanders uh, were, you know, four and four, you know, they, they've won their last three. And then you, you look at the teams they've beaten, you know, the bears, you know, not very good. Uh, the Packers, you know, slumping, I would say, I think that they're better than what their record suggests. Uh, and then the Colts, which, you know, <laughs> they've seemed to have given up on the season uh, that they've already moved on after uh, Matt Ryan, they, they, they're going with a different quarterback. So you know, not exactly a, a murderer's row of NFL teams right there, um, especially in two of the cases. So, you know, I, I think that the odds makers are kind of shortchanging the Vikings here. I mean, the Vikings have played great football this season, uh, you know, solid defensively, but, you know, it's that offense. You know, you, you know, Kirk Cousins playing playing pretty well, you know, except when the lights, you know, come on. Um, you know, the Delvin Cook, you know, his old self, you know, Justin Jefferson's one of the better receivers in the league, you know, great passing team uh, there, you know, they, they certainly have the weapons for it. So, uh, and then they just picked up uh, TJ Hawkinson uh, at the trade deadline, which, you know, that that'll give them a, another weapon on offense. So, you know, I think that this team uh, will go into Washington uh, and beat uh, a team that hopefully We'll move on from that schlub owner that they have there in Dan Snyder. You know, there's a couple of candidates out there. Even, uh, you know, Amazon boy is, you know, thinking of buying the team, uh, you know, Bezos, you know, I think Byron Allen is his name might buy it. Any one of those guys is a much better choice than the bum that they've had for the last two decades. So you got Minnesota winning and covering that, obviously. That's right. That's right. All right. Justin, go ahead. Well, yeah, I'm I'm a little surprised by this this line too that it's only three and three points. So with with that, I'm going to take the Vikings. But like I, I will say, you know, yes, the Vikings are six and one. They're they're looking at the number two seed in the NFC right now. But I'll tell you what, like I can't wait to bet against this team because I I think that their record is very inflated in terms of how they've actually played this year. Like their offense has been okay. It's but if you know if, if excuse me, Chris, I know you're probably not familiar with this, uh, this stat, but you know, if you want to go on DVOA, which is a pretty good predictive stat on, on how good a team actually is or how well their offense or defense is playing, you know, the Vikings have a lower third defense and their offense isn't even top 10. I mean, hell their, their offense is ranked lower than green Bay's. So I, I think they're going to get exposed at some point. Uh, I think they caught, you know, they, they did beat Miami who I think, you know, Chris is a decent, decent team when I can't believe I'm saying this, but when two was out in the field, uh, I think they caught Miami at the right time and beat them by a score, but you saw how they played against Philadelphia. They were terrible. They looked like they were playing a different sport. They were so bad. So I, I'm not a believer in this Vikings team at all. 
I, I think for the amount of weapons they have, and they just added TJ Hawkinson, I think you can be a, honestly a little disappointed at how, how productive they've been. That said, you know, the commanders are a, a bad franchise and they don't have a home field advantage. So I think you can take that out of consideration. I'll take Minnesota. All right. Our next game, uh, a rematch of last year's uh, NFC champ. And um, no, I'm sorry, not last year's NFC championship game. Two years ago, the, oh, sorry, a playoff game, divisional game last year, the Rams at the Buccaneers. Buccaneers are three point favorites. I think if you had to say who are the two most disappointing teams this season, uh, I would say it's the Rams, the Buccaneers. I mean, I think everybody thought that definitely the Buccaneers were just going to pick up where they left off and Tom Brady and everything. And, and they've been super disappointing. The Rams, I mean, I think we all knew that they weren't going to be as good as last year, not having Adele Beckham Jr., not having Von Miller, that they were going to take a step back a little bit. But, you know, the Rams have, have not looked good either. So that being said, I like the Rams to go into Tampa Bay and cover the minus three. I think the Rams, on paper at least, just I think this is a better matchup for them. Um, Tampa Bay is having a hard time running the football right now, and I think the Rams have the better defense. So I'm going to go with the Rams that cover the minus three. Go ahead, Robert. This is a this is a tough one um, because neither of these teams, you know, has really shown any signs of being the contenders that you know, people thought that they would be, you know, coming in this, this season, you know, you look at the Rams and, you know, they really haven't gotten much out of that, uh, that offense this year. Um, you know, that's, that's been a bit disappointing, I think, uh, you know, the defense has played, you know, fairly well. Um, and then you look at Tampa Bay and, you know, what a, what a mess. I mean, you know, you do wonder, you know, it's easy to joke about it, but you do wonder how much of the Tom Brady saga, uh, has affected him and, you know, just, you know, the, the passion he has for the game and, you know, his preparation. And, and of course, as we know, you know, there were times that he wasn't with the team, you know, leading up to the season, you just wonder like how that affected the prep this year, especially with, you know, a you know, fairly new offensive line. I mean, not, not a lot of those guys are, uh, you know, the, they lost at least one to retirement. I know that there were injury problems. So, you know, um, you know, tough circumstance there, but, you know, both the teams have the talent. I mean, the, the talent's there. The question is, when is it going to show up? Um, you know, I, I think that this is a tough one, but, you know, the Rams to me have been too inconsistent. Um, I'm going to ride with the Buccaneers in this one. I think, uh, you know, Brady has shown signs of life and maybe a newly single Tom Brady will go out there and show some aggression. You know, he he's out there, you know, wanting to sling the rock around. I mean, he's got plenty of people to pick from. You know, there's still a lot of talent in that receiving core. Uh, so, you know, let's make it happen, Tom. If you can't be a good family man, at least be a good quarterback for me wow. on Sunday. All right, Justin, how do you follow that one up? Go ahead. You, you know what's kind of stunning to me? Um, considering that, yeah, Tampa's offense has not scored at nearly the same rate that they have the last couple of years or that they were expected to this year. But I was stunned to see that Tom Brady is still second in the league in passing yards. So like they, you know, they can still pass the ball up and down the field. It's just, you know, I'm, I, I haven't looked up the numbers, but I, I would imagine that it's their red zone numbers that are really what's what's killing them and, and turnovers and stuff like that. Uh, but they can still, they can still push the ball. I, I do not think this is a good matchup for the Rams because uh, despite what happened when these teams played in the playoffs last year, uh, the Rams offensive line is a lot worse and the Buccaneers defensive line uh, and their, their ability to create pressure, even though they've had a, a couple injuries, I think that's going to be the difference. Um, you know, the Rams going into this week had the third worst point differential in the entire NFL. That's generally a good indicator of how good or bad your team is, is if you're getting blown out every week or you're not playing in close games and the Rams haven't, they've, you know, they've been bad. Matt Stafford's been bad. Uh, Cooper cup is like a one man show on offense. 
they've got drama going on with the running back situation. It's just, uh, you know, and they're not a deep team. They're, they're paying the price for all those, all those swings and trading draft picks and stuff. Uh, Tampa Bay is not playing like a good team. I do think they're a better roster top to bottom though. And, you know, if you're going to ask me, despite Tom Brady's uh, off field stuff going on right now, which quarterback do I think has a better chance of showing up and playing well? Well, I'm going to pick him over Matt Stafford. So with that, I'm going to take Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. All righty. Wow. I'm, I'm by myself with the Rams then. Okay. Our last game, the Tennessee Titans going on the road at Kansas City. This is the Sunday night game. Kansas City, just like the Bills, favored by 11 and a half. Big fat spread. Um, boy, I'll tell you, this, this is a fun one. Um, you know, the Titans usually give the Chiefs a tough time. I know that playoff game a few years ago, I think, what, the Chiefs, the, the Titans were up like, what, 17 nothing or 21 nothing, And then the Chiefs came roaring back and literally blew the doors off the Titans. Um, but, you know, here's a stat that's kind of interesting. I was looking this up. So the Chiefs are number two against the rush in the NFL, their defense, their rush defense. And the Titans are number one against the rush in the NFL. So, I mean, you have two excellent run defenses here, which says to me that this is probably going to be some kind of a shootout. Um, and if it's going to be a shootout, I like Patrick Mahomes over Ryan Tannehill. If he plays, I'm hearing they're leaning towards playing. If it's Malik Willis, then, oh, my God, that's that's definitely not good. But I think the Titans can definitely slow down the Chiefs a little bit. I think they're going to cover the 11. And a half. I think they lose by a touchdown, 10 points. But I think Tennessee's going to cover the 11 and a half. It's a big number. And Tennessee's not that bad a team. I think they cover the 11 and a half. Go ahead, Robert. Uh, Tennessee hasn't scored more than 24 points in a game this year which is hard to believe uh, in this day and age of the NFL. But, you know, when you look at this team, whether it's Willis, at quarterback, I mean, Tannehill, I think, offers them more as a passer. But it's pretty clear, you know, after that game against Houston last week that um, th- they don't have a whole lot in, uh, of confidence just yet in, in Willis as a, as a passer. I mean, he had 55 passing yards. So, um, you know, you lean pretty heavily on – Derrick Henry in that game. Fortunately, he picked up over 200 yards on the ground, had a big day, and they were able to beat the Texans by a touchdown. Um, You know, I I think that this is a game that, you know, look at what happened with the Chiefs against the Niners uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, You know, the Niners are a team that, you know, pride themselves on running the football uh, and don't have a quarterback that can really uh, sling it. and keep pace with the likes of Mahomes, uh, and they lost by three touchdowns. I, I think that a similar thing could happen uh, this week. You know, the, the Titans' defense is is solid, no doubt about it. But you're going up against Mahomes. Uh, you're going up against Kelsey. You know, Juju Smith Schuster has emerged as a pretty nice target for for Mahomes. And you know, the the thing that's misleading about run stats in the NFL is. You know, if you're a team that's ahead a lot, like the the Chiefs are, well, teams aren't going to be running the ball against you. So it looks on paper like, oh, you, you know, the Chiefs have a stout run defense. It's like, well, when, when they're when they're up by three touchdowns, you know, unless they're the Packers, apparently, uh, how many teams are going to be running the ball uh, in those situations? So, um, you know, I, I think that can be a bit misleading. But that said, uh, I am going to take the Chiefs to cover in this one. Um you know, I was leaning toward the Titans at first, but, you know, looking at the numbers, looking at how that team has operated this year, you know, they've really relied on kind of the old school, you know, run the football, you know, you know, play good defense and hope it works out. You know, that'll work out well for you against inferior opponents like the likes of the Texans, but it ain't going to stop the Chiefs. Uh, Mike Vrabel is going to be I hope he bought, brought, you know, whatever he has, Skull, Copenhagen, whatever it is, he's going to be chawing a lot on Sunday night because it could get ugly quick. Uh, so, yeah, Chiefs all the way. Jason, who do you like? This this is, I mean, I, I guess you would expect this with an 11.5 point line or whatever it is, but uh, it's tough. Dude. That's a lot of points for, yeah, a team that Kansas City, in the times that they've played the last couple of years, they've had a hard time with Tennessee. I mean – 
I just looked it up when they played last year. Granted, it was in in Tennessee, but the Titans won twenty seven to three. Yeah, you know, uh, and that was kind of that was the game that kind of started Mahomes' swoon. And they they didn't play in twenty twenty, but they played in two thousand nineteen twice. Obviously, one of them was the AFC Championship, which uh, the Chiefs won by eleven. And then they played earlier that season in, in Kansas City, and the Titans won a close high-scoring game by three. So, you know, not not a lot of teams tend to give the Chiefs a lot of trouble, but the Titans do seem to be one of those teams. Uh, that, that's a lot of points. You know, I, I think the Chiefs are going to win comfortably, but I think it'll be maybe 10 points. So I guess I'll, I'll take Tennessee to at least cover. Um, they just, you know, they seem to know what to do against Kansas City. So I'll roll with them. All righty. So uh, a couple things we're going to discuss before we, we can finish off with the weekend here. So uh, biggest surprise team and biggest surprise player as we're basically at the halfway point of the season here. Got to love an odd number of games. Thanks, NFL. Uh, I think the biggest team surprise team is the Seahawks. I mean, everybody left them for dead after the Russell Wilson trade. And here they are with Geno Smith and they're five and three. I mean, granted, the NFC West has proven not to be a, a great division. Arizona has been disappointing. The Rams have been disappointing. Um, and the 49ers are starting to get things kind of figured out a little bit, but they're four and four. Um, so I, I'm going with the Seahawks, man. I think Pete Carroll, I mean, you know, quietly getting the job done and uh and again Geno Smith I mean it's it's incredible that here's a guy that is the definition of a journeyman of a first round bust you could argue and he's he's having the best season of his career and uh I don't know if he's in the MVP conversation but um he's I think you put him for the comeback player of the year award in some way because uh it's amazing what he's doing for the Seahawks that's the team I've got being the biggest surprise Justin, who, what team do you have as being your biggest surprise? Well, I, I think if you, if you want to go in like a positive direction as far as biggest surprise, uh, I, just, I just look at the kind of three teams in the NFC that have really were expected to be bottom feeders and contending for that number one pick. And instead, they're, uh, they're all either leading their division or uh, in a wild card spot. And that's, that's the Giants, that's the Falcons, and that's as you said, the, the Seahawks. So uh, I do wonder if they're a little ahead of schedule and that might hurt them in the long run because all three of these teams uh, kind of need a long-term answer at quarterback. And all due respect to Daniel Jones and Marcus Mariota and Geno Smith, you know, they're kind of taking themselves out of contention for uh, one of these quarterbacks and what's supposed to be a good class. But I think on a positive side, they're, they're easily the biggest surprises, but my, my team is going to be the Denver Broncos, uh, a, a team that uh, lost their young star running back early on with an ACL injury. Uh, now they're far back in the AFC West and they traded Bradley Chubb uh, on top of the fact that their defense, which has played really well this year, honestly, already had several injuries. So they're kind of throwing up the white flag and it's just, you know, even if you think uh, Robert's boy can't hack it, uh, wasn't a head coaching candidate, you know, he still runs an offense that you think should work. And I, the fact that Russell Wilson has fallen off to the extent that he has, you know, I think you could say he wasn't peak Russell Wilson the last couple of years. Um, being hurt last year and then kind of getting off to that really hot start in 2020 and totally falling off a cliff. I don't think you could have seen how bad he's been coming. It's just missing throws. And uh, he, do he doesn't look athletic to me in the same way he used to. And when, when you're a short quarterback and you're uh, you can't see over the line and you're not super accurate on the short and intermediate stuff, he needs that athleticism. And, uh, that's looking like a terrible contract for the Broncos if, if he doesn't turn it around. Uh, so th they're my big surprise. I thought they were going to be a really good team. I, I love that receiver group and the skill positions. I thought they had a good offensive line, and they just really needed a quarterback for one and a head coach with 
a more updated philosophy on how to win games because they've they've been going defense the last few years, you know, with Vic Fangio and uh, I think it was it Vance Joseph, Chris, the, yeah. the old Dolphins coordinator, was their coach for a year or two. Um, just hasn't worked out. So, and it, it doesn't look like it's going to turn around with all the trades they've made and all the injuries they have. So, um, better luck next year. Robert, who is your biggest surprise team of the season so far? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for a lot of reasons, uh, you know, all your um, all your picks are are good so far. Uh, I I'll throw the Jets into the conversation. Uh, you know, I I did trash their quarterback, which I still think that he's a bum. But uh, you know, they're this is a five and three team, and and I think it's all credit goes to the coaching. You know, Robert Sala has done a great job with this team uh, in the you know season and a half that he's that he's led them so far. Um, just uh, you know, just a, a great job. You know, they're again they're five and three. Defense has been playing well. You know, they've gotten they've had the offense has had their moments at times, but a lot of that depends on you know, can you know is Zach Wilson you know thinking before he does something, or is he just kind of slinging the ball uh, out there uh, like he was last week? But you know, there, there's a good foundation for a team there. I mean, I think you know coming into the season they they were viewed you know I think in a lot of circles as kind of the fourth team in the AFC East and, uh, you know, to see them, you know, for now uh, above the Patriots, you know, we'll see how long that lasts just given how the schedules play out here. But, um, you know, uh, they, you know, they definitely are showing signs of life now. Will that translate into a playoff spot this year? I don't think so. I think that, you know, they'll probably come back down to earth and lose some of these games. You know, you you look at their schedule. I think they beat the toolless uh, dolphins, uh, you know, at one point, you know, they beat the Packers and, you know, but the Packers are slumping right now. So, you know, as the season goes on, are they still going to get those kinds of wins? I, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, so it might get tough for them, but certainly in the first half of the season, I think it's fair to say that it's a surprise that this team has been able to piece together five wins, uh, you know, for sure. Uh, because I, I think a lot of people, if you ask them, how many wins do you think the Jets are going to have this year? They would have said five. So. Yeah. So, you know, quite a, quite a performance for them. Just real quick, a team, you know, that's kind of a, you know, on the other side of this uh, is the Cardinals. Cause I think, you know, coming in this year, you know, there, there was certainly a lot of optimism about this team. Like, Oh, maybe they can turn the corner. You know, they give Kyler a fat contract, all this other stuff, but boy, Cliff Kingsbury, I think is on the hot seat. I, I think, you know, just given how that team has played and, you know, especially given, given the fact that that division has been, you know, a whole, uh, with the exception of the Seahawks, you know, wholly disappointing uh, that, you know, it's going to, it's going to bring more of a microscope on the job that he's done or not done, given the fact that the Cardinals have struggled this year. Yeah. We'll see. For uh, biggest surprise as a player, I've I've got two players. Um, Both of them are former Alabama quarterbacks, Uh, the Eagles, Jalen Hurts. And of course, my Miami Dolphins to a type of Iola. I, I still am. Um, I wouldn't say I'm, I mean, I thought the two was going to play better this year, more weapons, better offensive system, but uh, when he's healthy and that's the, obviously the biggest thing, he's put up some incredible numbers. And then uh, Jalen Hurts has done an amazing job too with the Eagles. I mean, and it, that's the main, to me, one of the major reasons why they're undefeated is Jalen Hurts is playing um, much, much better. So those are my two, surprise biggest surprise players Robert who's your biggest surprise for a player this season so far well it's quite a turnaround for a guy that didn't think much of Jalen Hurts coming into the year that's for sure no he's performing though (laughs) that's true that's true um you know for me uh you know I know Geno Smith's been mentioned I mean that's what a story that is I mean after you know he debuted with the Jets obviously uh, you know, this guy was relegated to like backup duty and, um, you know, he goes to Seattle and, you know, obviously coming into this season, they give an opportunity because, you know, to Justin's point earlier, you know, you're thinking that, oh, well, we're, we're playing for, you know, a top pick here. Uh, and then Geno Smith goes out there and is having a career year. Uh, he's, you know, leading the Seahawks to victories and lo and behold, they're, atop the the nfc west uh just a just a great story there uh you know for him i I mean you know the rest of it you know one of the 
one of the things I think, uh, you know, when you look at, um, you know, surprising players, you know, aside from the quarterback position, you know, I'm not surprised that Tyreek Hill is playing so, you know, playing this well. Obviously, he's one of the standouts, but the numbers he put are, are is putting up are just obscene at this point. I mean, we still have nine games to go for the Dolphins, and he has 69 catches, and he al- he has almost a thousand yards. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that when when that trade happened, that that he gets sent to the Dolphins, it's like, oh, he's not going to have Mahomes anymore. You know, Tua is going to be throwing him the ball. That is a drop off. It still is a drop off. You know, no matter how well Tua has played this year, you know, you're going from one of the best quarterbacks in the game to someone who's still up and coming. But Tyreek Hill's having a better year so far than he had ever with the Chiefs and I think a lot of that is you know obviously with the Chiefs you have Travis Kelsey there too so you're competing for targets but you know uh you know he's thrived in this offense which you know um you're not going to see Tua throw too many bombs I don't care what that you know Jamoke says at uh his uh his uh press conferences you know oh how about those deep balls blah 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 you know that this guy his bread and butter are going to be you know the slants the intermediate passes and the thing with a guy like Tyreek Hill is, you know, you can throw those passes and he can go for big gains. So, you know, again, not surprised that he's producing, but I am surprised that he is producing at this level because, again, he didn't produce at this level with the Chiefs. These are, you know, we're talking like record setting numbers uh, that he's putting up. And uh, I, I think that that's uh, quite impressive. Um, and also, given the fact that, you know, uh, his his partner in crime there, Jalen Waddle. I mean, these are two top five receivers. Fortunate enough to have them on my uh, fantasy team. Oh yeah. Um, and um, you know, uh, they're they're both putting up some pretty big numbers. That's it is impressive. I got to admit, I'm very happy so far. We'll see how it goes. Go ahead, Justin. Your biggest surprise for being uh, for a player this season. Isn't it amazing that you have? I can't believe I'm going to credit the Dolphins here, but. You have an organization who has a quarterback that, you know, they want to support and they actually go out and get wide receivers that are going to help them play better. You know, what a world it's, uh, you know, I I'm just so envious of these teams, like the, you know, what the dolphins did for Tua and hell, what, what the chiefs did for Mahomes going out and getting him veterans, you know, it's, it's gotta be nice uh, to cheer for teams like that, who actually care about supporting their quarterback, but uh, I, I digress. Uh, you know, I guess the downside of going third here is that you guys pretty much took all my answers. Uh, yeah. I was going to say Jalen Hurts yeah. uh, was my biggest surprise for just the giant step he's taken. Uh, so thanks for saying him, Chris. Uh, and then I scrambled there for a minute looking for something I thought was going to be outside the box uh, a little bit. And Robert Wen said Tyree Kill, who, yes, the fact that uh, people said he was going to fall off to such a degree uh, I think was overblown. Uh, go look at his numbers that he put up. I think it was his second year in the league when Alex Smith was the Chiefs quarterback. Um, when you have a guy like that who's uh, got such great speed and is so good in the open field and getting himself open, uh, he, he's not one of these guys who catches deep balls only. Uh, his touchdown total's taken a hit in Miami, that's for sure. But, you know, you, you can get him the ball in space and just let him, you know, get that yak. So, uh, not necessarily super surprised about about what he's done. Uh, well, I should say I'm surprised at the degree, but not surprised he's playing well. My answer is going to be Justin Herbert. Uh, again, I'm I'm leaning more toward the negative side. Uh, my I, I did audible to the Chargers as my AFC Super Bowl pick, as you guys know, and he was a big part of that. Uh, you know, this is a guy who threw I think almost 40 touchdowns last year, and uh, granted. The Chargers have had some injuries. You know, Keenan Allen has really not played uh, a whole lot. They've had injuries along the offensive line that uh, maybe should have been more anticipated because it's the Chargers and they're unlucky. But, you know, they had a good unit there and it's kind of dissipated. Uh, You know, this is a guy who was thrown six touchdown passes in his last five games. And I think the way that the Chargers started off, or at least the way he started off, you know, he threw for three touchdowns in the season opener against the Raiders and then played well again, I think, the next week against the, the Chiefs in a losing effort um, when he threw that pick six that the Chiefs returned like 99 yards. Um, I, I'm just surprised that their offense has been as bad as it is with such, with such a young quarterback who's 
got a lot of potential. He's got a great arm, uh, just hasn't materialized. And I guess I would say if you're the Chargers, you should probably take a page out of the out of the Chiefs book and well, let's let's get this guy some more weapons because Keenan Allen's old and injury prone and uh, Mike Williams isn't a, a spring chicken either. So we'll see what the Chargers do, but definitely and not necessarily through his own fault, but I'd say Justin Herbert's been a surprise uh, to me. Okay. All right, guys. Um, that's about it. And uh, folks, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you watching. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week.